those are people who are living under the rock that's mamuti uh, so so he he plays the main uh, character of basket patela and uh, he's kind of like uh, this uh, would you would you say he's kind of like an outlaw or he's like kind of like the last feudal lord of like after uh, tommy is like sleeping with his wife and tommy is like യജമാന്റെ പെർഫ്യൂം ഒരു മണം തന്നെയാണല്ലോ കിട്ടുന്നത് ലൈക് ബേസിക്കലി ഹി ഇസ് ഏബിൾ ടു സ്മെൽ ദ പെർഫ്യൂം സോ ഐ ഡോ നോ വസ് ഇറ്റ് ലൈക് ഇറ്റ് സൗണ്ട് വെരി വിയർ ബിക്കോസ് ലൈക് ഹി ഹാഡ് ടു ഗിവൻ ഹിസ് വൈഫ് ടു ഹിസ് മാസ്റ്റർ Hello and welcome to the podcast. Uh, it's been some time since we've recorded with regard to a cinema discussion. So joining with me is Atul Vijay. Uh, hi Atul, how are you? Hey, uh, Joel, I'm fine. Um, so for the benefit so, of the audience, if you could just introduce yourself and also what do you do? And... Sure, sure. Uh, my name is Atul Vijay. Uh, I'm a law student in Kresh University. I'm in my fourth year. Um, I'm also a part-time filmmaker in, in regards where I help in making certain ads. My, my main passion is making short films for now. and and i also write uh, scripts for youtube videos and so other short films as well and that's pretty much basically about me right so uh, b- before we move on to our discussion about uh, vidyan uh, so the what we the, the audience we're going to be talking about uh, this movie called vidyan uh, translated like if you want to talk about the literal translation as to what google says is the the servile so um uh, like when we discuss about the movie and also the impacts on, on how it has impacted the oh. not just the malayalam audience at large but also as to how the film even stands to uh, in today's time as well so uh, you you said about short films right uh, and and also mind that this conversation will also be in uh, malayalam english as well but then most like mostly in in english as such so atul varna wale you are doing uh, short films as such so uh, do you have any of your short films out out on or on any platform as well so it, like what's your basic genre like first thing like what's your favorite genre as such which, which you want to discover with regard to your short films and also uh, where is it available as such so uh, one of the major genres that i love personally is the um, character based genres which is and also surrealism is one thing that i'm very fond of uh, <laughs> uh i the, the the limitations of short film making is such that you can only make character based drama you can't make for example if you want to make something with a with a proper background or if i want to make something with a proper set design i can't do it because i don't have the money for it so like the major uh, short films that i can make with the financial constraints and the technological constraints that i have is character drama but then um the type of short films i want to make is mainly surreal because i am a huge fan of the work of david lynch and i really believe that um, a proper lynchian cinema is just be executed for example surely coming right now that can be identified as a proper lynchian surreal uh, film but then that's, that's something that i would really like to pursue in my short films and something that i'm trying to bring forth with all the constraints that i have So, uh, and some of my films are on my youtube channel and some are on instagram also sure so i actually put in the links of the where the the availability of your short film as well uh, as to as to the plot platform as such so uh, atul uh, like especially with with regard to this movie called vidyan uh, so i i just approached you and uh, you said that, okay we'll, let's do this session with regard to discussing about a film and uh, and, and atul was like within might be a good movie uh, how about you try to try considering watching as such so in nyan uh, i did like so previously i i did hear about uh, within as such but then i was a little hesitant because nyan uh, like the, the, the film is directed by adul gopalakrishnan so the kind of movies is made so be, be it elipatayam which translate to, to the rat trap and also be it madhlegal means the wall uh, this the cinema which he makes i don't like i find like maybe since i'm more acquainted with the new kind of malayalam cinema which, which is not more fast paced and the editing also is a lot more refined as such um, what drew you towards a lot more slow paced kind of uh, film as such uh, actually um 
<laughs> when I suggested Vidhan to you, I was uh, watching a lot of Iranian cinema at that moment, mm-hmm. and at that time, um, Iranian cinema is something that is not at all fast paced; it's completely slow paced. So that you know, when watching this particular film called The Close Up, which is an Iranian film directed by director Abbas Kiarostami, I it, it's a very slow place, a so slow, slow paced and gritty drama. But it's based on real life incidents and shoots in, in real time also. So hence explaining the slow paced nature of it. And I've also watched this other film called Separation. Yeah. Both these films are are um, I, they, 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 they remind me of. Adur Gobarshan's work so much because like that's the only other properly slow paced slow paced film as uh, film of the first in Malayalam cinema that I remember. And even taking into consideration works like Elipatayam, Vidhayan, or as you mentioned Madhulival, all these works are extremely character based. With regards to Vidhayan, the um, character played by M R Gobakumar, Tommy I believe his his name is Tommy. The character of Tommy is something that is that is established in a very slow progression. There is no rush of the character. We would be we would only get to know Tommy and his relationship with Bhaskar Patel, the character played by Mahmoodi, who is the main antagonist of the film. His relationship is shown very slowly, and that's where slow pace, so slow pace dramas work really well because in such movies, for example, in in a movie like Vidhi, in which explains a proper master servant relationship. There can be no rushing, I feel, because if we rush, for example, uh, another movie in Hollywood that explains a master servant relationship, but that takes it to an entirely different tangent is Twelve Years a Slave. But Twelve Years a Slave cannot be seen as a slow pace movie because the ca- the plot beats happen very, very, very fast. But but then the the story within Vidhan is pretty. Contain. It's not of a huge scope. It's not a comment on slavery itself. It's a comment on the human condition, and such a nature can only be such a nature of emotion can only be portrayed through what I what I would say is slow pace. Even Elipata, which shows about the basic apathy of a person of the of the mm-hmm. of the main person within a household, the dad figure. Of the so-called um, masculine, Lord, yes, that is that. Kind of, kind yeah. of even, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. That kind of um, an emotion that we felt, it, it's very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And slow-paced dramas are are um, films that usually deal with uncomfortable topics. So easing us into that with a fast-paced drama, wherein our attention is always there, that will actually defeat the purpose of the film. I feel. So that's why Adur Gobarshan tackles such nuanced topics. Even Madhulival, for example, which shows the, uh, which is actually based on a story by Michael Bhushan. Michael Bhushan, yeah. Michael Bhushan, yeah. So even that, even the relationship between the and the antagonist and sorry, the the protagonist and uh, the lady played by K P C Nalda, it's something that is very. It's evolving very slowly. You see that semblance of respect turning into romance, turning into a sort of tragedy. Mm-hmm. It's it's there. It's just it 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 covers all the perfect plot beats, which is why Adur Gobal is indeed a master of Malayalam cinema. And so I feel like at least in today's time, since we are all watching a lot of fast-paced dramas, where I'm Our our attention is constantly on the screen, and not on the background that has that is happening. For example, in Vidhan, uh, and an important thing I felt was this this one scene where this outsider shows up and he is looking for his brother, but then <laughs> the Bhaskar Patel cannot even cannot even mm-hmm. imagine that his servant would be so friendly to another rich person. It's just so unimaginable that he beats up that rich man while the other servants are watching and just like they're just there. They have no agency of their own. They have a thought process. They have anything, but it's just that they are also buying into this system themselves, even though they are oppressed. And that can only be seen 
in, in slow paced movies because in fast paced movies we always focus on a particular character so mm-hmm. always there a character whatever that character does from a to b the character is doing but then in a slow paced drama since we have more time in our hands to analyze each frame you can see everything that's happening in the background and again one of the reasons why i love vidyan so much because of the bad because of how much the background scene there's also this one scene in particular which just shows an amazing visual symbolism where bakla patera sits down and a couple of villagers are giving their grievances and there is a bull head Ah. on top of I, I was just getting, I was getting to that shot actually i have a shot one scene so for the benefit of the audience there is actually this uh, this very fa- uh, famous uh, shot just from, from from the movie as such uh, and this is how it is uh, and i i, ha- I happen to notice it is very, very like the, the the shot is is t- taken so well especially with 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 the with the horns very symmetrically placed on the head as such symbolically as such so uh, but i i, I did try to understand the symbolism behind it but i didn't tell you uh, what you feel was the importance of showing this particular shot because do, do you want to like show he is kind of like this wild person or this kind of kind of, kind of like, like this man who just has no law and like basically like, like an outlaw of such or uh, what what do you think was this particular shot trying to uh, symbolize as such um in my opinion at least baskara patera from the very beginning is a man who is very animalistic like he does not have any sort of you know constraint or restraint that we, we can expect from a, a, a human in society hmm. he is a society on its own on his own like he is running a mini dictatorship within that particular village and that shows that and this this image in particular it's extremely symbolically striking because basila patera is a person who does extremely animalistic deeds and with them without any glorification like one of the main things is that when basila patera does things are unspeakable things actually like so please watch the movie uh, you will understand how much of a character how much of a repulsive character basila patera is um so the this symbolism in particular shows that he is basically an animal in charge is what i have felt because of, because usually framing a character from low angle as far as i know shows superiority and framing a character in this way can either mean that he is a demon in his, in, in himself or that he is basically an animal who will destroy everything that comes into his path it's also another feeling that i personally think can be taken from that particular symbolism certainly so uh, for the reference of the audience uh, for those of you who are living under the rock that's mamuti uh, so so he he plays the main uh, character of basker patera and uh, he's kind of like uh, this would you would you say he's kind of like an outlaw or he's like kind of like the last feudal lord of like after independent india like till independent india you had these zamindars so or you had these very powerful people who had in, like they just like uh, i i just happened to like listen to uh, uh, adogopal krishna's interview like it was kind of like kind of like an interview kind of like a session on what uh, vidyan was or even his, his film, filmography at large so where he was trying to mention as you know aa galatla so this man is kind of like the last uh, like he he still feel that he has the same amount of power which he had uh, like maybe his his father or forefather also had the same kind of power so he still feel that he still has the power and authority d- despite india being independent or despite people having their rights and duties so or you comment social commentary to nokku maningal maybe the 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 filmmaker trying to show that india swatantra even if india had got an independence the people aren't truly really, uh, aware about the kind of rights or the or the kind of uh, aspect with regard to you know what they have and what they do not have as such so uh, what, what do you uh, say with, with with regard to that um so uh, yeah that can definitely be seen as sort of interpretation um, basically bakla patela is a person who is so an outlaw is a person who acts against the law right against the established norms there but then the law is bakra patel are there so can we call him an outlaw in that sense because this person is so dominating around everyone including his own extending from his own household and the influence that he has on the village itself 
is something that is bizarre so i would suggest i would say that bakla patela is the law there and there is no uh, indian law that applies to this particular village which is which was true in, in a lot of cases because india has just gotten her independence and also another another facet of to me the emma emma gobuma the person who stand bit behind mamudi he is the protagonist of the film um with regards to him i always felt that after independence also um um what <laughs> a lot of us still feel survive to a higher power because there was this interesting video i saw by this channel called crowd which compared indian and chinese societies and indian society is basically functioning like a system where there is a higher power that is not all encompassing in the sense not all encompassing india india does not have a strong state but that's a strong society and that's how it works society works in a sort of tangent in in a in a, in a hierarchical level so when there is someone in power you naturally gravitate to that person in power and without question is the thing because when we look at the sort of slavery that is being uh, shown it's not like a critique on slavery as it's a critique on the human condition wherein we become servile without question it's not like a system of we can't compare the slavery in vidyan to an institutionalized slavery that is practiced in america for instance during before the civil war it's, it's very different because in this of course sort of slavery it's not institutional it's very it it's very much linked to a person wanting a job there's no like selling or there there is this is just very diluted in that sense more of a an internalized belief that i am a person who is survive because even in the end of the day if you see it that when basra patela is spoiler alert when basra patela is finally killed and tumi is free from his grasp he still runs away with the gun of his master in the same way that he ran with his master in the big, in, in in many parts within the film this shows that even even in that sense he is not really free he is looking for another master to serve so that's like a very different aspect of what within because it's not like you can it shows that the yoke of servitude is not something that you can break free within one particular moment of life it's just not like that it just doesn't work like that a person who is a servant like that so ingrained in some that that society is actually society that being that that ingrains a person with that sense of servitude and i believe this is actually the the ending especially where tommy has lost a lot of people in his life but still he is he is still indebted to his master even in death even the even 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 the master the master has died he still feels that that servitude relationship that the relationship of servitude with his master and it just it just a very true depiction because that's how a lot of people feel even i have also heard like i don't know if people know about this uh, novel called aadhi jeevanam by this uh, author benjamin it also touches on certain aspects that have been uh, taken in the name basically the yoke of servitude in general but even then the the feeling of servitude is same because there is no higher institution as a just just like you, you, there is you, you can't fight because you don't realize that fighting is the right thing to do here it's it's that kind of a situation that's put in with it if if we take a film like 12 years of slave the the person that the, the the protagonist in 12 years of slave knows that what he is being the two is wrong and there is a brief moment where he just gives in to it not because he feels right because he feels hopeless but then in this scenario tommy feels that it is right to serve his master it is it is it is right it's not it's and not 
serving his master is something that could be considered as wrong or even sinful. That is the society that Tommy lives under, and that is the society that Bhaskar Patel has created. Where his tyranny, his tyranny has no bounds, and it is served by the people who who are servants under him. No one else has given him that power. He does not have power as long as they don't give power to him. And these people still give him power. That's the only reason because Bhaskar Patel is just one man. So, but speaking about institutionalized uh, hierarchy as such, uh, our power, Ganamani, do, do you feel a toka at a a kasera at a? Do you feel that is the essence of the power than the person, like the 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 huge amount of respect or adoration for the particular for Bhaskar Patel is due to the gun and the chair, or due or due to Bhaskar Patel as a person as such? Do you feel that's the, like Dan, like Dan you spoke about uh, what 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 was not noticed in twelve twelve years a slave? Over here, uh, props. The main props are the gun and, and the chair. Do you feel that has a more prominence than with regard to controlling someone or having an immense amount of power? I mean, yeah, definitely. The chair and the gun play an important role because um, they are both symbols of oppression. Hmm. Bhaskar Patel always sits in the chair with a gun to show that he is authoritative. But then I also believe that the meaning ascribed to the chair and the gun has been given by Bhaskar Patel himself. So it's kind of a symbiotic relationship between the chair, the gun, and Bhaskar Patel. All three serve in tandem to to showing that he is a radical figure. Because after Bhaskar Patel dies, so he just leaves. Like he is still indebted to his master in this in his mind, but he leaves with the gun because the gun has gun. lost meaning. But he throws it in throws it in the water. Ah, throw it, throw it, throw it, throw it. Then that 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 like. See that when when Bhaskar Patel's reign is finally over, so Karina is a symbol that he can finally start to you know stop ascribing meaning to such things. Mm. Maybe maybe it can mean that, or maybe he is just fed up, or maybe it can mean a lot of things. Maybe either either it can also mean that the people who kill Bhaskar Patel he might go to those people okay. because there is because it, it can be interpreted in a lot of ways. I feel. But yeah, mainly if we if we see it in a proper sense, it can mean that the throwing of the gun symbolizes that he is throwing away his shackles. That can also mean something. But then the the through the entire runtime of the film, it just shows Tommy being survive under high in a certain sense. <clears throat> so I don't know how it can work like that. But yeah, definitely it can be seen like that. And also the gun, the gun, the 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 act of throwing the gun by Tommy only happens when the gun has lost. The power that is given to by Bhaskar Patel. When Bhaskar Patel is dead, then Tommy feels strong enough to pick that gun up and throw it without any fear of repercussion. And that only happens because Bhaskar Patel is such a terrifying figure, and the gun and the chair, I believe, are just tools for him to show his his um, authority. Because even without a chair, and even the gun, for real, it's one of the it's a main instrument of. Outwardly portraying his enemy, but then without the chair, I feel like Bhaskar Patel is him himself is a pretty tyrannical force that that is you know it, he can't be properly ascribed in words. It's just a feeling that Bhaskar Patel inspires in us. Like the acting of Mamuti here is impeccable because the man is a force of nature in this film. So yeah, I feel like it can be interpreted in multiple ways, and that is why the film doesn't have a Proper looped off close ending as such because the film ends there. So yeah, I feel that. So yeah, uh, speaking about uh, Mamuti's character, Dr. Uh, Katla, we always feel that he is the lot more powerful person, and he has a lot of like he has a commanding nature as such. And it's a, like for the first time I was able to notice like you know or a or a regional language le. they don't usually like if someone's like if you see in other movies if if one particular character speak in hindi immediately you see one malayalam dub lad it will immediately spoil the entire thing so i like the effort which mamuti showed that he, he could speak those uh, languages those lines in kannada as well so uh actually by highlighting the flaw like a gunno chair was a system of authority and power but he still couldn't uh, I don't know if it, it like though it was a lot more funny instance of him, you know, taking the gun and he couldn't like he was planning to kill, uh, shoot his his wife because she is kind of like a conscious keeper, so you know you know don't go and do this. Like he used to go and, uh, 
you know take anyone who he wants even tommy's wife also he had uh, he, he he had taken over as that uh, to, to his place basically uh, like he, he does this kind of lustful man but uh, our moment learning him he was planning to shoot the wife and uh, he misses the wife and he shoots tommy instead so uh, like uh, our did, did you consider that as a uh, did, like the The, the 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 writer or the director wanted to imply that even though by uh, physicality or by commanding forces that like you you still have the authority as a but then internally you're still a very dumb person you're you're still a very uh, naive or a very or a, or a person who thinks overestimates one's own power as such oh yeah definitely the whole movie is a is a testament to that because he's a total idiot he mm-hmm. he only has powers that is conferred upon him by others he does not have any sense of character or a semblance of his own that can you know give proper authority without force force is his main weapon is force and his overpowering nature is his main weapon and in that particular scene itself <laughs> the so uh, one one of the major things about azrugo bakshan is that he does not he only uses music fastly if we be see if you see within throughout it's just like a play that's happening without a lot of music it's just like it's happening in real time without a music there's no glorification of the scene so and the scene happens and there is no swelling music that just shows danger or something like that it just yeah as i said it can be considered extremely funny because uh, the wife goes away and the tommy just falls down and he's like oh my god it's just saving master so even even then that's another thing even when he shot by his master and his master is completely apathetic he's still asking his master for help he's asking as a man of sahay you know he's asking his master for help instead of calling for help from outside that shows that how how his relationship is with his master is is so weird because he can't it's like tommy's identity is melded in with his master without his master tommy as a person is non existent and even that in the end when he shows the gun it's him trying to trying to establish something of his own a new identity because that is the first act that he does that is not under the fear of his master or under the yoke of his master and even with mamut even with basra patel are one of the killers by basra patel as a person who has no morality to speak of like he speaks about patriarchal ideals where you, you can't hurt a woman and stuff like that but then he proceeds to hurt a lot of women so he is basically um, a hypocrite obviously because he is the uh, symbol of tyranny and in that particular scene what was shown most basically the need that mamoti does not care about his servants at all like it's big. even though his servants given power you know it's the servants that give basra but because not It's not like Basra Patel himself is a person who can come on with, but he needs the servants always with him. Uh, that's why he always has them with him whenever he goes outside or in a brawl, anything. Without those servants, he has nothing. So even in that moment when he was trying to shoot Saroja, but then it it went to Tommy. Even in that moment, he doesn't feel even a single bit of. He 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 is not. He is very indifferent. He was feeling angry towards Saroja. He shot Saroja. He tried to shoot Saroja. Didn't happen. He just trusted that he couldn't shoot Saroja. He is not angry that he shot Tommy. He is not. He treats Tommy as a person who is like a dog, maybe even less than a dog because even even for a pet we will have affection, right? He is just there. He is just replaceable. He is just there. If one Tommy goes, a thousand Tommy will come. That's how. Master Patel's mind is there in that particular scene, which, which makes it very, um, a very harrowing watch because that that apathy that portrayed the Mamuti, his expression does not change from from shooting to watching Tommy bleed out to suggesting that Tommy can be just thrown somewhere in the graveyard somewhere, you know, we can just bury him if he dies. And the only force that you know kind of counteracts Mamuti was Saroja at that time, but then like with the movie progresses in a very dark turn after that you know so yeah speaking of dark and like now like or a scene and that like uh, tommy is like sleeping with his wife and tommy is like yajamanda perfume for a manana than like basically he is able to smell the perfume so 
I don't know. Was it like it, it sounded very weird because like uh, he had to give in his wife to his master, uh, and also he's like, is it was it trying to symbolize that even at home or even at even if he's not along in the proximity of his master, he still feels enslaved. So, or do Stockholm syndrome was? I'm not. I'm not going to trivialize that particular uh, situation. But or another situation, then I don't know. Like even the perfume or even inanimate things, even towards the end as well. I uh, ending learning him. He 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 and his master gets uh is is going away and he he just uh, uh master uh see uh uh, uh you, just smell like smell like like a perfume. He just pointed out to some crops over there. So, do you think even the most inanimate things was also uh showed that he was very much servile and 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 didn't didn't mind even if it was his wife or didn't mind if, even if it was any other woman as such. See, I I feel like Tommy is a. is a person whose masculinity as such exists in relation to his master so when he so basically i i personally feel that both characteristics of tommy and bakri patel bakri patel is toxic no question about that but even tommy to an extent is toxic because there is a hierarchy because only because tommy allowed that is his wife resists it's seen in the first attempt when his wife actually does not like he she even cries in tommy dance saying that this is what happening she does not want to be with the master but tommy is indifferent to that also he he feels that and he feels helpless too that because his masculinity his identity exists in relation with his master the deed that his master does he feel vicariously into that deed himself it, that's how the relationship works so that's why as you said in that scene when he comments on that to me this bakre patel doesn't have to be there in that room because it he's there in here he's there in mind to me and to me is just so ingrained with that belief that his master is the supreme power that you know he's giving him everything it's just like even i'm that's why i'm thinking that even after bakre patel died that act of throwing the gun it doesn't necessarily make him free because throughout the film it's shown that in multiple instances to me even to me household is an extension to bakre patel's power as you said it's a complete extension of bakre patel's power and he wherever to me goes i believe that influence of bakre patel will follow him i think that's like the ending and it's a very tragic ending because to me as a character he he is not a good person i feel he is a person who is trying to break free even though he is subject to a lot of toxicity that has been given him to by society as a main figure of cause he is trying to break out of that overpowering nature and be independent himself i i, I actually, actually have no idea what would happen if tommy was actually but because in that particular scene itself it showed that him taking the, him he was running away in the first time even after bakre patel died in that that he's not running away he's taking the gun that's like the first instance that he does so obviously even even in that act i think tommy is drawn to authority and power so i i don't know if tommy as a person as an individual would would be a good person or not in the in the normal sense of morality that we have and even in that scene when he extols mars's virtues is just this shows that he wants to be like his master in some regard but then why would you want to be like bakre patel he is like the worst character that i've ever seen he is like the worst first star i've ever seen in my life but then he he relates to certain attributes to bakre patel he wants to be bakre patel yet he cannot be since the day and then he he extols the virtues of bakre patel but he does not have those virtues himself he seems the very weird relationship that is like the very weird relationship that he has he wants to be him but he can't be him so he's a servant so i don't know if tommy is in, as a person is going to be better than master patel but then master patel lars the on compassing power is definitely felt throughout the film and even in tommy's household with the actions in the tommy tommy's wife and that also shows like a problem with society even today because it usually when something happens to the main person in the house which is usually the husband that something happens then it affects the entire household and the entire household is like supposed to you know agree with that particular statement for example tommy it's it's, it's tommy's master it's not her master that's that's there but then 
since he is tommi is monster the 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 flow of power goes from basa patela to tommi to his wife so it the middle factor here is tommi and i don't think tommi can be absorbed from this blame because he is a part of that patriarchal system which oppresses because the wife is not even a person who is directly under the employment of basa patela I mean, and yet she is subjected to the horrors that basa patela inflicts on her just because it's coming through to me and that's the only that that's like another major experience. i i don't know whether go by listen actually commented on that properly and sh- but then in in a modern sense in modern sense where a lot of toxicity of society in general is being taken apart in the, in the modern life i think we can see we can reframe that scene and a lot of scenes in vidhayana as such in a new light where it also throws shade on how society itself functioned at that time and still functions today because even today if something it happens to the main person in the house so which is usually unfortunately and usually uh, the male the male husband uh, the other husband is usually the main main person in the household if that happens then it it is supposed to trickle down to the family yeah. which is a very dumb thing that this still exists and we can see that as a commentary on that as well and, and because it m- movies are subject to the viewer and how the viewer feels it so yeah definitely i believe that the all encompassing figure of basra patel are is first in tandem with the all encompassing authority of um somi as well because i think the women in vidya is like it's like the the more more oppressed than somi are the women in uh, in vidya whether it be basa patel's wife or tommy is that they all been ha- dealt terrible hands even though tommy has some semblance some semblance of at least authority when he his wife is oppressing him his wife is being oppressed by everyone that's how it works in the end that's how it worked in the society back then and it's still how it was in society to an extent now i'm glad that society is trying to change but then yeah it changes pretty slow we we'll see that like uh, speaking of uh, female characters I, uh, and i as far as his filmography is concerned i've only watched like three of his films including within and Ma- madalikal and also uh, ali batayam but uh, have you noticed like uh, or or do you notice that the writing of the female characters are not are not are pretty shallow as compared to what you you would want to have a lot more defining roles for the men uh, for, for for the male characters as such so example it's either their subjection they are they are, they are subjected to the master or subjected to the uh, to to the feudal lord as part of the family or they are kind of like i'm not saying a or love interest for all but they play a significant role like like example mother um, and at you have kps she, she, she doesn't even show herself in the in, in the film you only see a voice so uh, like i know that uh, times were different but do you feel that uh, uh, fem- female characters in the writing perspective kind of running do you feel that there's some kind of a flaw as such are the female characters if you are in them there's a huge flaw i think mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. even even today i feel like indian cinema in general has not yet gotten the grasp of how to write female characters because even today like back then in vidhyan the female characters existed in in like in relation to the male characters and that that that's it that was the main function of the female characters they had no autonomy of their own in the film or in any film whatsoever as far as i i remember on all malayalam cinema and all indian cinema as well female characters having their own autonomy was just was just in brief moments there was no humanizing of a female figure and i may still feel it today even in today's cinema even in female empowerment there is no humanization of a female character um a very good friend of mine told this important point where in uh, when i when i was writing my first female character in a short film then women have the same emotions as men and that is how it should be there you know, women can feel jealous women can be uh, can be evil women can be good a lot of emotion in female women and women characters in general in indian cinema is very one dimensional they serve one purpose and that purpose is usually in addition to their main characters mm-hmm. i feel like there are only some movies like uh, dil darakhan do is one movie where i feel them so the character has many dimensions like she is a person who is struggling through a lot of things 
So I felt that one film has it. But then other than that, a lot of films had, uh, like sadly do not possess like female characters who are true in their own sense. Because uh, usually in uh, you and uh, this is like a huge trope that is still being followed. The female character dies, and for example, I, I was seeing Maran Mayram the other day, and the entirety of Samir Rady's character in Maran Mayram is basically in relation to Surya. When Samir Rady dies, Surya goes in depression. So Samir Rady's entire function there is to fuck, is to facilitate Surya to go into that whole depression phase. Mm. As like really bad writing in terms of characterization because. I I I understand like having characters as plot points but then having female characters and love interest as a focal force plot point but the love interest dies is either being killed cancer is like a um, n number of scenarios that happen with female characters in with respect to vidhan um even uh, gulash's writing or in writing in malayalam cinema in general at that time was not progressively it had good character character development but then in the modern sense it has absolutely no progression i feel which is something that is being remedied but albeit at a slow pace it is being remedied and female characters in malayalam cinema and indian cinema on the whole has been has always been dealt a very bad hand i felt because actually world cinema i would say because even in hollywood we can see female characters having their proper autonomy recently Like one one of the one a major series that I love, where the female character is a central plot, and the female character is so nuanced, just really bad. Then the cast of Phoebe Waller Bridge is extremely nuanced in the sense that we feel Phoebe Waller Bridge's character as a person who we can relate to, whether man or woman. See, I I believe that is the purpose of a character, and when when we are writing any character, that character's emotion should be felt. Like, Vidhan would have been much better if the perspective of Tommy's wife was also shown. Like it, it the problem isn't that Tommy's wife existed in such a society. That is not at all the problem. The problem is that Tommy's wife was written written in such a poor manner that Tommy's wife was only relation to Tommy. There is no autonomy of Tommy's wife in general. Even Sarojini Patel, and even Basu Patel's wife only existed in relation to Basu Patel. There are no scenes of ba- Basu Patel's wife alone. Or any scene in Vidhan wherein Master Patel's wife is dominating that particular scene. No, it's not there. It's just like she um, serves as a conscience. She serves as a basic plot point, and it is like it just speaks to cinema of that time. He, he only he, if we compare it to today, then almost no films of old, like Hollywood, Bollywood, Mollywood, anything. None of them hold in today's light as like proper representations of characters. so yeah that that's how i feel about that uh, so uh, one more thing no- noticeable is that there uh, is a controversy under the nayato cinema kat they say that no why uh, is that like person from the low like low caste is considered as, as a movie a villainous character as such so do you feel that uh, like even within as well uh, i'm not saying it he may, he may belong to the 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 lower strata of, of society as a, basically he must be like you know a, a low caste as, as such Do you feel that uh, such characters are either or a villainous role or or someone who is often subjected to do something? For example, the uh, Basak particular character will will want Tommy to do this because he is uh, he is of, of, of the particular stature as such. So, is there a commentary on on that uh, uh, considering the class and the hierarchy as such? So, um, class hierarchy is something that has existed in. society for a long time um, i think commenting on class hierarchy is not an issue as long as it's done peacefully again even even in this scenario um stereotyping of characters based on their class and their caste their religion to a certain extent that of cockles frequently in in indian cinema um in vidhan as such it is definitely a comment on class structures because So me as a person belongs to the raw sort of cast that was there back then. Um, today I I believe that such structures are being melted away. I would like to believe. I'm not sure. But then 
yeah in that time the class structures were definitely a focal point of almost all films even 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 pondan mada is another film that was released contemporary to then which dealt with class structure in general pondan mada being a low caste character in that film again played by mamuti Mam- Mam- so yeah definitely but but today i feel that the the discussion on class is very different because if you see uh, a movie like Oh, I can't believe I forgot the movie's name. Uh, uh, Hindi or Malayalam or which movie? Malayalam, Malayalam. Oh my God. Uh, my friends will kill me. Why did you say that? Kamatipadam. Kamatipadam. I'm so sorry. Kamatipadam. Hmm. In Kamatipadam, the class hierarchies are portrayed just outwardly. There is no nuanced social commentary. The class hierarchies is there. But then... Kamathi Parham had to face a lot of censorship at that time because of his with a portal of caste like they can't even say caste names which is like mm. this is like prevalent in society part not already under the pulayan no like it was already part not under no but they they couldn't say it like some mm. words were censored like mm-hmm. which address caste relations and also mm. caste relations today it's hard to speak about caste relation properly under the kala to much it wasn't such a polar society the society wasn't so divided on opinion it was more of a like the struggles of caste casteism in general and class societies it could have could be portrayed properly you know like the vidyan is like a proper portrayal of a class structure that happens which is like driven to the extreme vidyan the adhe situations ipo undavanamilla but then vidyan the adhe dynamic full of situation mm-hmm. where the, the dynamic between tommy and uh, the main person of the patel that still exists in, in today's society it's it's there and then cinema today i find it extremely hard with all the limitations that have been imposed on cinema to speak on this topic freely this is a topic that has to be addressed cinema has always been a vehicle for change in almost every society ever even even malayalam cinema at the at its inception was a change even the first malayalam cinema itself the backlash it faced okay the it, it just uh, it just there outwardly that classisms existed at that time and how tyrannical classisms were at that time today i feel the debate is a bit muddled because of a lot of other factors coming into play but then i feel that um, a proper discussion not shying away from caste relations or class relations in general proper discussion wherein um there is no wall that separates two issues or that wall that separates the audience from the real issue that focus upon a lot of movies even commentary part into that extent even though there is a mention of it there is it is just shown as um, a class struggle you no know, people from the lower class but even though that is not what i believe rajiravi is portraying okay. because rajiravi himself has said that a lot of censorship has happened where uh, a lot of the the cinema should be communicated properly because I there's also committee part of four hour cut as far as i yeah, know that should have been released but then i don't know if that level really <laughs> but then proper commentary on caste struggle is something that is that, that that is very diluted in cinema i feel today which I can think be the max, the max representation can be like a uh, blue color or like uh, or like example i think one of the most striking examples is uh, karnan and also uh, pariyar and perumal as well in tamil i think they were able to get away with that because they were i, I think it was a lot more polished or more lot more subtle they have been true to that extent yeah, they can be seen yeah. as a proper and i'm glad that uh, such films are coming out today like that ex- properly established upon caste issues yeah, but in malayalam cinema i it's still muddy because it's, it's a very polarizing topic mm-hmm. caste relations today all in times it's fine but in speaking about castles today in my personal opinion it, it it exists it's something that is there you know like i belong to this certain society you belong to that other society it's something that is there and then showing that in a certain sense is something that needs to be done properly and i believe and i really hope that there is no censoring of such content in the future because and vidyan was something that even though it it was overtrained class the the topic of religion being because like most of migrant laborers there were christian they were not and bakta patel was an upper caste person there 
and also offered to a different religion so when that happens even even a certain um feeling of superiority but then again it's completely up to the viewer discussion and we are, we will we, we, we won't actually know what adur gobal version meant in that cinema portray and even that doesn't matter i feel because whatever i see in my in that cinema is my own feeling and that's like a personal relationship i have towards within and almost all movies i watch so yeah and these are like kind of things like i i think better female characters uh, better cast relation not shying away from controversial topics properly uh, another thing that i have felt about modern day cinema is that um, representation is done just for the sake of representation in in any any form whatsoever and it's something that we really need to stop because it's like they are mocking proper representation characters it's 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 actually in my opinion very simple characters all characters need they need, need need to have some form of nuance all characters need to be written as characters and not as plot points or references any character works but even if a character is written as a plot point because sometimes it can't be avoidable some characters come for a brief moment of time make sure that they are just plot points there they, they they don't they don't you're not they 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 they're not any sword or representation of any imagination or any something that we need to say to society if that's something that we need to say i think we need nuanced characters to explain that because a lot of things we feel uh, i personally feel is like a romanticization of a certain character because a certain character belongs to a certain class or certain culture but there is no humanization uh, back in america there used to be this entire trope called the magical negro trope where in this the black person would come in as a savior to the white person and, and there's the the white savior trope where the white person would come as a savior to the service of the black person this is still prevalent in some cinema today and then i believe we have so many similar tropes like that of our own in in our cinema which just needs to not exist and every character needs to have the one that's all i want to say about that definitely so uh, like you mentioned about uh, uh, the the class and the, and the, the hierarchy as such like i was just particularly demanded of this particular scene okay so yambalathla you had you had the tommy character coming in and then he throws the rice cake to the fishes as well and then uh, and then there, like it's uh, it was mentioned that you know uh, one second uh, i think it was i think uh, he wanted to take the fish i guess but then the uh, one of those who were present that right it, it's a sin even if you are hindu or muslim as such and the next scene you see is he 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 says mother like uh, i palak tell us to tell so the devi i'm sorry i i, I have such, such thoughts as such but directly in contrast contrast to the character of uh, of basket bateler who you know he he calls him one night tell him you know what i want to just take some fish he brings some dynamite and he throws it on the, on the river so uh, what do you think was the like like guru uh, like despite like like i mentioned he was a christian he was a migrant labor as such uh and also part patla despite being a hindu and dis- he, do you think that it was more of a commentary on you know he being about the about nature above the law of nature above about uh, religion as such so that's why he can do whatever he wants and even if tommy is a christian or of a particular different faith was it also a commentary that you know he he still belong, he still uh, accepts or he still acknowledges that he, there is some particular tradition which has to be followed as such so i think that scene in itself serves as an extension of tommy's subservient because tommy is not a the, the whole figure of a goddess when even religion in a lot of sense it it's usually there to uh, i can't believe i'm quoting marx here so there's this um, so there was this uh, there was this uh, german philosopher known as feuerbach that says that says that we two people two human beings they understand each other through god and that and karl marx extrapolated around that by saying that two people understand each other through commodities and he said that like religion is the opium of the masses yeah, yeah. this is this is something that's being used religion is a tool that we use in this scene at least to make sure that tommy does not have an identity of his own like tommy being a christian is tommy's integral identity like he is a christian he's a devout christian because every facet even if tommy's autonomy at his home tommy's autonomy in uh, 
the uh, the type of food he wants to eat the type the moment that we want the people that we want to associate with everything is being curbed by bakla patela and society at large there just show that how how oppressive society was back then even today it is oppressive to a certain extent even though not at that extent definitely not but then today even today we can see that existence of a proper individual identity is something that is missing from society mm-hmm. an individuality that a person we are all expected to be part of some bigger group uh, whether be religious or social anything i believe that some the problem and we to me belong to the certain the migrant laborers the certain class of migrant laborers that it it just makes them do and it makes every migrant laborer there devoid of any identity it also makes bakra patel and his gang also devoid of identity because they're all seen as oppressors mm-hmm. and that's just their identity as such the collective identity which also builds up on the point where say, india has a strong society because society in general is composed of groups that exist in in, in tandem with each other and there is no individual identity that's allowed to express so in this in this very scene the individuality of tommy when he wants a fish not for any purpose be not for any nefarious purpose but, but then for the purpose of consumption he wants that fish but then they are like, no the god is not but then the rules of the god is only applied to tommy that rules of the god is don't apply to bakra mm-hmm. patel surely because of bakra patel's influence hmm. and maybe also the fact that bakra patel is a, is a the like prominent hindu figure there so that also can be taken as an oh uh, so, so coming to a, like a d- dynamite in the pump it did not really yeah. affect because it, it always went off so was it a reminder that you yeah, know yeah, law of nature or even religion also is is more important or more powerful or he's lot more subservient to the uh, to, the, to to nature as such was, was it also a particular point as such possible possible but more than that i feel like it represented how past the can get away with anything but not everything hmm, hmm. because even though bakra patel are wants something he does not get everything that he wants because again his power he, even in this scenario where the dynamite goes up his power is only there and extend to his migrant laborers the people under his personal yoke other than that he has absolutely no power so also shows how bakra patel bakra patel dies even bakra patel something like that it even bakra patel has action of throwing the dynamite it's going off and a lot of issues like that it talks about how his power is because there because of the laborers that give him power without any laborer without any person who acknowledges him as a power he has absolutely no power which is goes to show for every authoritative figure in society today so like uh, coming to the towards the end like speaking about power as such Uh, do you think like he was like the lion in, in his own den but when he came out of the den for example after he shot his wife his uh, wife's brothers were coming to coming to look after uh, look at look like coming behind him as such so he wanted to escape with with, with tommy as such so do you think that uh, so gradually the power also his his influence or his uh, or his particular stature also became a lot more uh, less when he came out of his uh, position of comfort when he came first he went to his nephew his nephew also said no i can't i can't house you here go go somewhere else uh, go somewhere else as such and coming to the point of you know uh, to the to the very point of even uh, acknowledging that tommy uh, till now who he treated treated very uh, unfairly he calls him as tommy till, till that very particular point he never called him as tommy he always considered him as very inferior so other uh, do i'm going to call on angle do you feel that A, ma- a person is very only comfortable in a particular uh, you know, comfort space, and when he comes out of it, he's obviously the the, the just like you and me, or just or just like anyone else. And, and yeah, and yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, and it's more true in the case of Basu Patel because Basu Patel, as I said, has no individuality of his own. The only only he only exists in relation to his migrant laborers. So the identity of the migrant laborers is something that is tied to the identity of Basu Patel as well. without those two who are giving him power he he has no identity he has no character he just exists as a single lone person without any motivation whatsoever and even when he goes to have the the reason because because he is taken trouble and there is no one who will help him because he is not has proper identity for office he is not made any proper relationships 
where he can be identified as a person who 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 is capable of making a meaningful relationship when help can be given there is nothing like that bapra patel as a person is a figure of of authority he is uh, a symbol of tyranny but then that's it he does not have an identity of his own and because of that he is incapable of forming meaningful relationship which also is very true in the ending because he just dies like no one to take care of no one to care about him he dies it's mainly because of the figure that the, the power bata patel's only motivation is sir is to exert power when that power is taken away from bata patel he is no one he is just an empty half of a person who who does not have even a semblance of character of its own so yeah i can definitely say that bata patel is is a person who without his people without the authority that that, that is conferred upon him he is absolutely no one shown at the end of the film and kudos to adolu obasha for that because that's something that's very really hard to express in cinema as such and that was expressed thoroughly in the cinema and yeah so uh, did the realization of him losing out uh, come after like like he lost his after he killed his wife and he still regretted it as such so did you feel that it come it came out of that particular point because till then he never want like he wanted to kill his wife he never regretted about it but after he killed his wife he was still saying uh, did she was she able to de- to recognize my hand like or sort of a macbeth kind of reference and i don't know i felt like uh, macbeth and I, I, i could just see stain there was the blood and things like that so how was uh, how was that particular process as such i think that bata patel has never really loved his wife it's more like he did his wife as a pet or a commodity that he felt attached to because if bata patel truly loved his wife like an individual he would never engage in the act of trying to kill her and and that happens to a lot of people in society i feel because uh, um i have you seen invincible there's a series called invincible in yeah. amazon prime so even even an invincible uh, towards the ending when uh, the the antagonist son the protagonist asked his dad how he felt about his mother he was like his mother was more like a pet to him which is like a very true it is a bit like a ring to here also because basu patel is not seeing his wife as a person or an individual that exists outside of his own figure is outside of his own reach it's like that that woman exists in relation to him and that who that who woman is the only person whom he has formed some sort of bond with even though it's like a weird kind of you know another must have a relationship another must have a relationship to be exact to be exact but then it's only the only the symbol of bond even even then he is struggling to emote basupta is a very troubled person he, he cannot emote properly he can't express properly which is the facet of toxic masculinity at that point of time which did exist today too so that that is show because it the questions happen after the deed it's not like he had any sense so he was like he was completely indifferent towards the but then after she dies it's just like oh my god that is this whole revelation it's because he misses her which is, which cannot be equated with he loves her or he loved her so i feel it's that more like a master servant missing i miss my servant or oh she's been there for a long time oh she's gone by the way now i feel bad it's just that there's nothing more depressing on grief and he's not grieving her he's just like kind of yeah uh, the entire i'm going to be feeling man it like, goes like that but this this just shows that bata patel has no emotions whatsoever and he can't have any emotions of the of the very nature that is imposed upon master patel Mm-hmm. so uh, to, in the end uh, after finally he said like that any there's a use of gun everyone shoots but they never get the target finally but patel dies even what uh, like you used to saw the previously other they want to kill patel and they, they still miss I'm like okay you you shot it felt like he died but then he didn't die but again patel was like it's a commentary that may, uh, maybe that you know he often miss the target not not as him as such but after he dies uh I would have seen the uh, Tommy goes and tells Omene oh, Omene oh, uh, uh, my master uh, uh, master has died did you feel that like yes you saw it more breaking the shackles breaking the 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 aspect of you know no longer the master but then he still is attached to the master but also 
no no longer has to no longer does omena have to go to his master each and every time was also was what was conveyed right so that also builds upon how he is still observing because hmm. even then he just can't break away from his master and the fact that he he he, he, yes, he also doesn't take omena swings in the consideration that because i'm pretty sure omena would hate the hate this pass and still he talks to omena it just it's like a weird combination of tommy because tommy as a character in itself is extremely conflicted he wants to have his master he doesn't want to have his master he wants to protect his wife but he can't protect his wife he wants to exert some authority he can't exert some authority so he's being pulled in different directions mm. and the ending is also a true testament to that when he he a multi media of forces is just like pulling him to different different sides but then he just can't exert proper authority because he is no one without the his master existence in his brain so this thing also is like a further exaggeration of that so to my final question okay uh, how are you i think uh, maybe adul gopal krishna was able to do it but uh, thinking of uh, a, a person like mamuti stature as such or well, uncinematic like the most uncinematic death uh, one of the most uncinematic like, at all you don't even see him like like you know bullets are are entering into his stomach or front, or, or, or the camera is facing his face and but it's between two rocks and it's and it's pretty distant like our shot I, 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 i think i could have shot but then basically these rocks and then uh, tommy sees uh, the, his master uh, dies but very distant so uh, do you like how or what, what do you feel like was that the end of the entire aspect of you know you're very insignificant or like how was how was that particular commentary as such because i felt i didn't like i felt like okay at least just show the person from 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 behind being shot but then this is like from very far distance you could see through two different rocks and then again the waterfall and that. so i feel like adul babas is the person who doesn't engage in anyone's glorification they all most of his works that i've seen in these um he he has not glorified any person or any aspect and even mamuti's death it's not something that is to be you know shot in slow motion in a very zack snyder square where he dies it's 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 it, it, it just it just happens it's not like it's not a tragedy it's not a comedy it just like happens and the 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 the, the reason for shooting so fast i think it's to uh, when lasper dies he is nothing he so this is also from the audience that upon his death he's known no one cares about him he is basically nothing unless he can assert that authority he loses that authority you know in his dying moment for me is with him but then like when that happens he's just done he has no authority and master patera's death is something that is just it's not a it's just a moment that is there it just happens there is no meaning ascribed to his death as such because the man had no meaning ascribed to him in life mm-hmm. in that he is just a rotting carcass nothing more and the the reason of filming that would be to show that baksha patela in that is nothing mm-hmm. and human beings in general that that also accepts that point where i said that music is used fastly to elevate any emotion because what you see is what you get in most abhugobas movies and i also explain the slow pace nature because it is a very grueling movie to watch these are such 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 grueling topics and seeing these topics in a non fast paced scenario it's just a lot to absorb it like uh, me personally i've been i've gotten like very uncomfortable watching uh, a lot of other gobas movies because the, the message slept, is just I there in the three movies i actually have slept once in between and yeah, it's, it's very it's very normal because Alugo Vasan movie it is it's very grueling to watch but once that movie ends the the entire meaning is absorbed with you like it, that that's like a beauty of slow paced cinema hmm. even another um, director i would say is a master slow paced cinema is andre tarkovsky hmm. yeah. tarkovsky is a person uh, yeah definitely his films like nostalgia sacrifice solaris all these movies are extremely slow paced and to be to be honest we all sleep like i have watched some scenes in 2x speed and 1.5x speed so i think just like move on with the story view but then the thing is that uh, when when we see it in its entire period right, then we can <clears throat> understand the concept very 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 truly pay attention in fast paced cinema we rarely pay a lot of attention attention but the beauty of slow paced cinema is that we will have to pay attention 
in order for to the movie to move in our minds at least so psychologically speaking we have to pay attention and that's also does it in a beautiful way even adur gobasan does it in a beautiful way whether it be madrigal elipatayam or vidyan uh, and that is the beauty of slow paced cinema that is missing today uh, another slow paced cinema i feel was imayu even it was in very slow pace it was moderately slow pace for the first time because mayanthan at that time was going through a transition from like uh, being completely action packed to getting uh, on a more slow pace and yeah definitely so i we feel that the slow pace movies slow pace movies uh, both move, movies are good fast pace slow pace and all genres of movies are good there are no bad genres that feel there are only bad movies and a bad audience also is something that may be there for a lot of reasons but then in almost all adur gobasan work there is something that adur gobasan wants to say there is no bland movie even adur gobasan's less acclaimed work in name which was which, 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 which was i believe he yeah, released recently only 2020 i'm not sure i'm not sure of the date but then even that was a slow paced film that wasn't that accepted but he had something to say there and in all his movies out of the gobash has something profoundly important to say all he need, need to do is be with him throughout the journey to keep keep his trust and we just understand it because um when our attention is going diverting like that in a lot of fast paced movies we fail to grasp the meaning there's a lot of movies me personally i'm i'm not very uh, fast read so i have to watch like movies like three or four times to properly understand the meaning i had to watch uh, almost all the seven all movies i watched like three to four times to actually grasp what the man is trying to say even though they are extremely fast paced movies so watching watching an adul gobashan movie in its entirety taking its time is actually kind of refreshing after a media a myriad of fast paced movies because there you can just relate with the character i really did to me i really did to bazar patel i really did really to the wife i really did to the migrant labor it's just it's a very all encompassing feeling that comes when you're watching a slow paced movie that's all i can say about that before we end uh, there's one more co- like i don't i don't think i don't know if it, there's any more controversial question as this which is <laughs> uh mamuti ana mohanlal ana uh, do you feel like is the more challenging uh, challenging kind of an actor because i still feel like my my sincere opinion is like yes uh, definitely mohanlal is the more natural actor but then at least mamuti still challenges himself like you still had 2019 i think 2019 was his one year where he had unda and he had apparent as well <laughs> same over here you had potamada and you also had uh, vidyan as well so <laughs> do you feel that like i i know i know it's a bit controversial to, uh, to say so but say, Uh, what uh, what you about about assessing these two see, actors as me me personally i'm a, i'm a huge mohanlal fan i've been from a, from my childhood uh, mm-hmm. I, i i grew up in trivandrum the same place in mohanlal mm-hmm. grew up in i i live like uh, it's it's i i have a very personal relationship to mohanlal films in general and mohanlal characters they comparing certain mohanlal some certain characters can only be proud of my mohanlal example Mohanlal is still playing it safe. I I really believe that Mohanlal will try to take on more challenging roles. But then comparing Mohanlal and Mamuti in their prime is almost close to impossible because there have been so many good movies by Mamuti like Amaram, uh, Rapagal. All all these movies like are genuinely like emotional, inducing moments, and they were like um like great works of Mohanlal like Kiruvar, Avana uh, Prasam. There are so many movies so. Come, each actor has their own that they bring, and even when they're together, for example, in Harishman, which was a comedy, fast, comedy. fast paced comedy film, hmm. each person held their own. And Harish, and even this question is for controversial. I can tell you in terms of Harishman because in in Harishman, uh, the the theaters that were uh, like above Kochi and Kochi, I feel yeah, they, they in the ending of Harishman. 
Yeah. They change the climax based on the actors. So that's how controversial he's like comparing Mammootty and Mohanlal. But I, 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 I genuinely feel like even though I'm a huge Mohanlal fan, I genuinely feel like uh, Mammootty uh, brings a certain panache and a certain class to certain characters. And he can also pull off characters that are very downtrodden, like in Pondan Mada or in Surya Manasam. He's pulling off characters that are very downtrodden. Like he can pull off emotions. Even I'm very curious. I was very, I was yeah, very stunned definitely, to watch definitely. him like speak full English, like like not even the Indian English for exactly. this. He was like he was speaking like like pretty much Oxford Awful. kind of kind of kind of. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. And also another personal version of Mamuti because he was a lawyer, so mm. that's another personal version that we can add to Mamuti. But then yeah. both people have their own pros and cons i just want both of them to so in today's film industry at least a lot of brand building is being made whether it be the brand of mamurti or brand of mohanla and these actors are not i don't know if the actors want to or actors in general not the mamurti and mohanla a lot of actors in general are focused on building the brand rather than building a good set of films for the film filmography and especially actors like mamute mohanlal who have a wide range of emotions and can and can make the audience feel something so beautifully and so profoundly i really wish that all and both these actors would completely use their emotional the the range they have the skills they have to make better character driven movies that's all mm-hmm. so with that being said uh and before I, i let you go like if you could just tell a, a few recommendations to the audience as well with regard to uh, i'm not saying like nowadays people will say okay exploring malayalam so you need, you need to watch so into movie you need to watch so into movie but uh, what are your like your favorite directors and also uh, at least one or two films from at, let's say you you pick three direct uh, four directors or three to three four di- 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 directors and also uh, at least a, mil- a film or two with regard to each of them So, with my regards to favorite directors, I I I like very different directors. So, my all-time favorite director is Stanley Kubrick. Uh, the man is a legend. He is the he is undoubtedly the master of cinema at that time. And for Stanley Kubrick filmography, I I presume that a lot of people watch The Shining. It is one of the fa- most famous Stanley and Kubrick. And the Space movies. Space Odyssey as well. Space Odyssey, definitely yeah. Space Odyssey. Uh, but then, other than these two, I would suggest to watch. Eyes Wide Shut, which is a very it's another Tom grueling. Cruise. I think Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Tom Cruise. It's Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Mm. So yeah, and this film is something that's grueling. And also another movie where uh, the entire the, the entirety of Stanley Kubrick's range was shown was a Clockwork Orange, where Stanley Kubrick worked with a very low budget to make such a grueling drama. Another director, my my alum director that I would prefer before guys, what is the Arvindan? Arvind then I, I I hold to Arvind then films um like um what did after this one I believe like let me just check I what did after when was the when when yeah what did after it was in the like, 90s uh, how about we uh, because then when I told me to me at how about we discuss a few uh, old film films with regard to their uh, surrealism as that I was a little dumbstruck because my knowledge about films of the of the previous at least the th- at least 40 50 years ago is very is very weak as such so i think he could suggest a very some to me oh what it up to is a very beautiful i had even then film that i would i it released in 1986 yeah i i think it's there on hotstar uh uh-huh. it's there on hotstar you can definitely watch that actually all i had even then film because that person is a is one who has explored like different genres and In in different manner, like the manner of genius, I have even then definitely watch all all of the Arvind movies. Like there is no particular movie that I can suggest. Or if it was the first Arvind movie I watched, so I have a personal relationship. Or if it was the then that's it. Another director that I would probably watch everything is Edgar Wright. That man is a legend. That man is a master of telling um, cinema through the lens, and that is like Edgar Wright is one. He he's made many famous works. Baby Driver, Shaun the Dead. um and it's first film of the successful of finger is so goofy it's so weird that i i love that film so much and then uh, last director i would prefer like has a has a stellar record he does not have a bad movie in my in my my place is 
ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ജോസ് പലശ്ശേരി ഹി ഹാസ് നോ ബാഡ് മൂവീസ് ഐ ലവ് എവറിങ് ഫ്രം നായകൻ ടു ചുരുളി ഐ ലവ് എവറിങ് ഓഫ് ദാറ്റ് മാൻ വുഡ് ഡെഫിനറ്റ്ലി ദാറ്റ് ബിക്കോസ് ഹി ഇസ് എ വെരി ഹി ഇസ് എ ഡയറക്ടർ ദാറ്റ് ഐ ക്യാൻ കമ്പയർ ടു ദ ബെസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ബംഗാളി ഡയറക്ടേഴ്സ് ഹു ഹു ഹാവ് മേഡ് സച്ച് വൈഡ് വെറൈറ്റി ഓഫ് ഫിലിം such as even even contemporary directors such as roni sen who has experimented with a lot of um, a wide variety of motion in bengali cinema like this palasheri is a person who has established himself as a person who will tackle any genre comedy be it horror be it character dramas everything lgp has done in a very beautiful manner too of the fantasy lgp he has a very small shooting window most of his films are shot in like one two weeks max a month they just and that that other man is al uh, you can just the man is the force of nature and he is internationally well known as so like definitely watch his movies and that's all i was yeah master of chaos is what some people might oh master of chaos his person believe is that my language has no grammar nor does my cinema so like he indulges in it so i i love that man yeah so yeah uh, with that uh, what are you currently on to uh, atul like with regard to like your, your your upcoming projects as such and also beat your everyday reading as well okay so um i'm currently working on a couple of short films that i'd be planning to shoot on iphones because my camera is uh, dead so yeah. i my my friend's camera is happy you can share i'm planning to tackle a lot of comedy i've never tracked tackle comedy yet so i would love to tackle comedy horror and thriller genres but then uh, all these job comedy can be done with a low budget thriller and horror need some more uh, budget to execute properly so i'm thinking of that and based on reading um i've been reading robert mckee's story it's like an, a beautiful read on how to write scripts um sid field's book which is a master class on how to write scripts and oh and if you are interested in learning about the aspects of filmmaking that channel i would suggest uh, in depth city in depth city okay. is a okay. in depth city very famous channel that deals with all aspects of film production and it doesn't focus on film analysis rather than focuses on the analysis of how directors work out and cinematographers work a more personal intake on how the crew works rather than how films work in general so i would really suggest uh, watching that to those who are interested in filmmaking. So that being said, uh, thank you so much Atul for coming over. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Uh, I know like it's we have overshot the time uh, quite a lot yeah. and, and I'm, I'm sorry if, I, if, if any kind of inconvenience or if, if it's taken some no, time no, 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 uh, with regard to it. And uh, definitely looking forward to more uh, sessions with regard to further movies or even uh, conversations regarding movies or books as well. and definitely, I definitely yeah, would love definitely. to host you once more uh, into the into the podcast as such so yeah okay thank you so much this current episode the full length will be available on youtube and also you you have to find that latest updates about this session as well on instagram and other platforms as well so do like share and subscribe to our channel on youtube and also follow our instagram page with regard to regular updates as well mm-hmm.